Hello everyone and welcome back to learning how to build and deploy a Solidity smart contract in Google Colab. In this lecture, we're going to learn how to interact with a smart contract that we built. And the smart contract was built in Solidity and we're going to interact with it in Python. So join me back in your Colab project. First, we're going to instantiate Web3 by using Web3, the object. And we're going to call web 3ethereum tester provider as the provider for our node. This is the simplest provider for testing. I'm going to set the pre-funded account as the sender. So web 3eth account for doing transactions will be web 3eth.accounts at index zero. This is an account that will have test ether available for you because we're using the Ethereum tester provider. So it's very easy to get started and it has test ether you can use to perform transactions. Next, I'm going to instantiate the contract, hello world. So I'm going to call web3.eth.contract. Here I have to pass in the ABI for the contract. So we can get the contract ABI with this previous line that we had contract interface so we can use that again this time actually store it in abi then same thing for the bytecode so in order to instantiate a contract you need the abi you also need the bytecode so let's create a variable for the bytecode this is the contract interface at the key of bin Make sure those are in strings. So that will give us the ABI and the bytecode so we can instantiate the contract. All right, so next up, we have to submit a transaction to deploy the contract. So first we can inspect hello world. Okay, so it is a web three contract, great. Next, I'm going to call hello world dot constructor. So I'm calling its constructor, which is instantiating the object and you can call this as many times as you want to instantiate the contract over and over again into different objects and we're going to call transact which means we perform a transaction on the blockchain to run the function that we want to run so in our case the function that we want to run is the constructor so if we call the constructor that is deploying the contract this transact makes it an official transaction for the blockchain, our blockchain being the blockchain provided by the Ethereum tester provider. So it's not the main net, it's the provider for the test net. The result of this function will actually be the transaction hash. So you can print out your transaction hash. I'm going to run the code cell and we get the hash as a result. Okay. Then after the transaction has been mined, we can get the transaction receipt. So I'm going to call web3.eth.wait for transaction receipt, passing in the transaction hash. Okay, and that is the TX underscore hash argument, our transaction hash. The result is the transaction underscore receipt. All right, so that is what we're going to get the transaction receipt which we can print out so let's run this code cell okay um, let's see I'm just going to remove TX hash and pass in transaction hash okay there we go now we have our transaction receipt so we have an attribute dictionary which contains the block hash the hex bytes so you can remove the print function to see it more clearly okay so now we have the dictionary which contains the information about the transaction, the block hash, block number, the contract address, cumulative gas used, effective gas price, from what address, the gas used, the logs, the state route, the status, to whom, the transaction hash, the transaction index, and the type. Okay, so that's the receipt of the transaction. Like when you buy something at a store, you get a receipt. Same thing here. When you buy a transaction, you get the details about the transaction. All right. So now we have been able to deploy the contract. Next up, let's go ahead and use the 
address of that transaction to get the contract. So I'm going to get my hello world contract by using web3.eth.contract again, but this time I'm passing in an address. I'm going to use my transaction receipt dot contract address, which is a property in the dictionary. Oh, it's a key name with a property as the value. Okay, and then we are going to also pass in the ABI. So that's how you can get a contract. Then you can print out the hello world contract to see the results. So we just get this contract object. All right, then we can call functions from this contract instance. So we can grab the hello world contract and call something like say message and run this cell. You just have to have the function exist. So you can scroll back up and make sure that your function exists. So in our case, we're trying to call say message. Okay, so that has to exist. So be careful of that. Then you actually can't go through it directly like this. You have to go through functions and then call say message and then also add call. Okay, so that will call the function and we get hello world as a result. Now, what if we wanted to change this? Because as you recall from our contract, we have say message, but we also have set message. So what if we wanted to change the message? Okay, well, for that, you have to perform a transaction. Because if I just call set message and pass in a new message here like buy, I can run this code cell. Okay, but if I call the message again, you'll notice that it won't change. It will still be hello world. So this function actually didn't work. The reason is that we're just calling a function with the call keyword, which means we're just getting its information. But that means we aren't modifying the state. If you want to modify the state of the contract, that means you want to change something in the contract, like update a value. So to update a value, like in this case, to update the message, you have to do another transaction. You have to pay for it. It's not free. You have to do a transaction so that it happens across the blockchain. And it's not free because in this case, you, it requires gas. So you can't just call, call. You have to actually do a transaction. So we can do a transaction just like we did before with this transact. Okay, we can copy that again to see how similar it is. So this time, instead of calling hello world, we're actually accessing our specific contract instance. Okay, not just the hello world class or contract, but the deployment, the object. So we're calling an object. Next, what function do we want to call? We want to call set message, not the constructor this time. Then we call transact which means we're actually doing this as a transaction. It's going to cost us Ether from our account, which is free for us in this case because we have test Ether in the test account. But if you were using the mainnet, you would have to use real Ether to pay for the gas. Okay, the result of this is going to be the transaction hash again for this transaction. So it is a different hash. So we can call this the buy hash. Okay, so then we can run this code cell okay the contract has to have set message so you actually have to go through functions again so note here for just calling the contract constructor you didn't have to go through functions but to call an objects function you have to go through functions so make sure you go through functions okay then you can inspect the value of the by hash okay so that is the hash of that transaction Okay, then you can get the transaction receipt just like we did before. So how do we get a transaction receipt? Well, we called wait for transaction receipt. So we can do that all over again. We can call web3.eth, wait for the transaction receipt of the buy hash. Then we can get the buy receipt and run that code cell. And we can inspect the value of the buy receipt. So again, we get the block hash, the block number, which is two this time because our functions we now have called two transactions, one for deployment, one for, then we did this function say message. So we have two blocks added and all the other information again. So we have our receipt again. 
So now if you call say message, a different function, you can run the code cell and we get buy. So this tells me that we were able to update the state of the contract instance from hello world to buy. So the actual contract setup doesn't change. It still has hello world because this is just the outline, the file that defines a hello world contract. But I can deploy this contract as many times as I want. Okay, I can deploy. These are all separate objects that all live on the blockchain. They come from the same contract outline, yes, which is like a class, but they're different objects. Each of them has its own hello world that doesn't affect the others. Okay, so that is why we had to go through the contract object to then set its message via a transaction. If you redeploy the contract, so if I create the contract again, then I'm actually going to have a brand new instance. So I can check that. I can create hello world 2. Okay, and I can call this contract again. And I can call hello world dot constructor dot transact. Okay, so I can do this all again, just below. So I can get the transaction hash again. And what else can I get again? The transaction receipt. I can get that again. Just watch out for indentation. After the transaction receipt, we then instantiated the hello world contract. Okay, so I can do that again as well. Get a hello world contract this time too. Okay, because it's another one. It's a unique instance. Then I can call its functions. Okay, for hello world contract two. And this time we get hello world. Okay, so the initial function or the, the initial contract that we deployed still says buy. Our new one says hello world. Because every time you redeploy a, co a contract, you're using the original code all over again, which still says hello world. So if you want to change the message, you have to make a transaction and that will only affect that one object, that one instance. You can deploy the contract as many times as you want to get back to the original state for whatever code you're using for that original state. All right, so that is how you can interact with a smart contract with Web3 Python. So we learned how we can create a Hello World smart contract and then interact with it on Colab. Join me in the next lecture, everyone. We will start a new project. If you liked this video, then go to training.mammothinteractive.com. We have tons more content on blockchain, web development, machine learning, and much more. We also have a membership for just $19 a month where you can get access to our 372 course bundle and counting.